There he is. How's it going, Fatty? Hey, Chris. How you doing? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, but not too bad. What's up? What you up to? Oh, mate, just uh, just chilling in my room at the moment. Not too much. Yeah, I guess. Um, I mean, lockdowns must be tough for you guys. Eh? I mean, the weather's so good at the moment, so it's it's gorgeous, and we can't can't get outside yeah, and play cricket. It's absolutely disgraceful. Isn't it? It's like it's the driest May we've had in years, and I think on in record we've never had a dry May, and we can't go out and play any cricket, which is obviously devastating. But obviously, a lot of things going on in the world right now, so uh, that's it. Yeah, too much. No, I think yeah, we've got to appreciate that there's bigger problems, I guess. But you know, hopefully sooner rather than later, you'll be you'll be back out there and you know enjoying at least some cricket this summer, which which we're all hoping for. But um, with where you're staying at the moment, are you based with your family or are you are you pretty much isolating by yourself no i live with um live with my partner in uh not um, okay. just the, the wrong side as the derby for derbyshire fans always tell me um but yeah we live up in um in nottingham so just chilling up here at the moment so i haven't really done too much um yeah yeah pr- pretty boring mate you must cough a lot of stick eh? living in nottingham and uh you know you play for Derby. Oh, mate every every comment i put on social media twitter anything i just get absolutely rinsed by the derbyshire fans <laughs> literally just every time i Brilliant. post a picture or something they're like oh is that nottingham not derby what a, what a hole and all this nonsense but <laughs> that's awesome yeah. man. brilliant because i saw i saw in your one of your recent posts you were um you did a was it a charity run in your in your cricket gear yeah yeah in kit nice um, man and that was around yeah, uh, around Nottingham. Yeah. yeah, yeah, around Nottingham, which is Brilliant. quite funny. I got a few weird looks, but luckily there was not too many people out. So yeah, I was going to say you got this bloke running around in the Derbyshire kits around Nottingham. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be too popular. But no, that was brilliant. What was that for? Was that an aid for what kind of charity? Um, it was for the Derby and Burton Hospitals Trust. Um, so obviously during this time they're doing a great job. So yeah, um, we sort of came together as a club and just decided we'd try and make a bit of money. Um, we raised over a thousand pounds for it, which was great. So, oh, um, nice. Yeah, we got over a thousand pounds, and I saw some of the young lads as well who were part of the Derbyshire age groups and stuff. They got involved as well and did the run. Oh, um, brilliant, man! So it was, That's... yeah, it was, it was awesome, mate. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of um, you know kind of charity <coughs> events going around at the moment to raise money for. Obviously, because everyone's been affected by this, right? You know, businesses, yeah. uh, people that are struggling. So it's good that you guys, obviously, you know, Derbyshire's taken kind of an initiative to to raise money as well which is really really good um yeah. but yeah obviously you know great to have you here um i think it's a great opportunity you, you're my age you're about 23 you probably don't know that but i'm 23 as well um 1996 what a year uh but yeah fantastic to have you on board uh, i think it'll be a great opportunity to for people to get an insight into your career um we'll save this video for people to obviously watch back in the future um but yeah i just wanted to start off with uh where you started your career basically um i know you know, you, you played for Sussex and uh, you made your debut at a very young age. So tell me what the kind of, um, you know, the, the pipeline was for you and the pathway. Um, yeah, it was. so I started playing cricket when I was eight. Um, okay. Mum got me into playing some cricket when I was younger. Um, living down in Sussex with my parents, obviously. Um, first got into the Sussex age group set up when I was nine. Um, yep. So got involved in that quite early. Um, nine, ten years old, um, played the age groups the whole way through. Um, started to sort of kick on a little bit maybe when I was sort of 14, 15 was sort of the time I started to really excel a little bit. I wasn't ever really any, uh, I wasn't any any way above anyone else in the age group sort of thing, sure. maybe until I was about 14, 15. Um, so probably about that age, I got into the academy when I was 14 or 15, um, the Sussex Academy. Um, and sort of from there, it was sort of a, they push you into the second team quite early. A few of the counties do, and Sussex definitely did. Yeah. So I was playing second team cricket at the age of 15, 16. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. Which was very, it was great at the time. It was obviously very challenging, but you get that exposure at a young age and you know what it's all about. So that was good. And then um, I remember missing a, missing a day of school to make my debut when I was when I was 18, playing oh, one day game. Yeah, brilliant. Which was, which was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a it was a quick rise. I, I don't think it went too well after that, but it was it was good to get to that stage um, early, I guess, and get a bit of exposure at that time. No, sure. And then obviously, what was it like? You know, you've obviously come through the you played a lot of safe team cricket when you were were fifteen, like you said, and then to obviously get thrown into the deep end to make a list day debut at the age of eighteen, that jump must be massive, right? Uh, yeah. Well, it was a funny game because I was meant to be batting at batting at seven, yeah, um, and I didn't get to bat because we. 
got 340 for three or something. Okay. Um, G4. 45 overs. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it was a 45 over game because of rain. And then uh, about 38 overs later, the game was done or something. I think Jack Rudolph got 160, 170 not out of like 130 balls and there won the go. game for them. And it was, yeah, it was a bit of a shock to the system. I don't think I'd ever gone at over six and over in one day cricket, and I was going at eight and a half. So oh, wow. okay. It's a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a. Um, Bit of a step up, maybe a step too far at that stage, but it was good to sort of get out there and play play a game. Obviously, list day debut is obviously going to live long in the memory. No, of course, and I think um, you see it a lot these days. You know, when a youngster comes into the setup, especially in the international kind of circuit, they always, especially as a bowler, they get targeted, don't they? It's almost like you know, first yeah. game in, let's see if we can pretty much look to score with this guy and dominate off him, which is you know to hold your nerve as a, as a youngster to and to put up with that pressure must be unbelievable. But, um, and then after that, you obviously, you, you made your first class debut as well uh, the following year, didn't you? Yeah. Um, what was the, you know, obviously, I think looking at your stats and, and looking at you as a cricketer in general, you seem to be, and I could be wrong saying this, but you seem to be suited to the white ball. Um, but how was, how, was the, how was the red ball cricket, you know, coming into that and getting started? Yeah, it was, um, I think... At the time, I, well, when I made my first class debut, I played as a bowler. Okay. Um, like out and out bowler, I think I batted at nine and um, played as an out and out bowler. Um, so it was pretty tough. I think we, their first over a bowl was at Vince and Carberry, who were both in the England setup at the time. Wow. So it was quite, yeah. yeah, it was a bit of a different experience. I actually, well, to this day, I had Vince out first ball at LBW. Oh, really? The umpire said he hit it, but he didn't hit it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, shocker. Uh, um, but no, it, yeah, it's, it was good to get involved, obviously, at a young age. But then um, sort of that period between 18 and 20, obviously, like making first class debut at 19, that sort of two-year gap um, that I had. I'd, I'd made that debut and I didn't play again for the rest of the year and then played again the following year, the last four games, and played as a batter. Yeah. Um, so I was opening the batting and batting at three and four in the last four games. Oh. So it was a bit of a different, different way and didn't, bat, and didn't bowl at all. So, um, yeah, it was a bit of a baptism of fire, of fire at either end. Yeah. Um, but then, sort of, obviously, with the opportunities I've got with Derbyshire um, last season, um, played my first game as a batter, and luckily it was on a very flat pitch against Middlesex, so the ball wasn't doing too much and got a few runs. Brilliant. And then, towards the back end of the year, um, the pitch was a bit more juicy, So I could, and then I was playing as a bowler towards the back end of the season. Yeah. That's the good thing about being an all-rounder. You can play as either, um, whatever's required sort of thing. Of course. Um, playing as a bowler and the pitch was a bit more juicy so got a few wickets with the ball so it was a little bit worked to my favour a bit last season I think with conditions no, um, but also getting an opportunity to play T20 cricket as well which is um, something I'd never done before and obviously getting to finals day was a bit absurd to be honest in the first season involved in um, T20 cricket to get out there in front of 20 or 1000 people at Edgebaston was a, a fantastic experience pretty surreal no, that's brilliant and I guess you know Derbyshire probably were, weren't the, the side that was predicted to to make finals day I, I don't know I could be wrong but you know they've obviously done really well to do that haven't they yeah we had a good season yeah I think yeah. it was a bit more of a shock because after the first sort of four or five games we hadn't we hadn't won a game I think maybe no we won the first game against Yorkshire and then we lost a few games in a row yeah um, but then towards the back end of the competition group stage we found a really good formula which worked with the players we had so um, getting from sort of like game six through to game 14 I think we won six out of eight or something oh, brilliant. Um, wow. to go into finals with momentum um, yep but yeah the, the club had never reached finals day before so obviously that was a Huge, great yeah. experience to go through that with the club um, in my first season uh, with them was fantastic yeah oh, that's brilliant and then just going back a little bit you said um, you know when you were at Sussex uh, you started your first class career as an out and out bowler batting at number nine and then a year down the line, you thrown in, you know, into the deep end, batting at three and not bowling. Do you think that was the the right decision by the county? I, I don't, you know, I know you're a youngster, and um, especially being 19 years old, I don't. That to me, that sounds like a risky a risky call to someone's career. Um, yeah. You know. Um. Yeah, it was. I, I think it was a bit. Um, the club had a couple of injuries. We had a couple of open batsmen out. Okay. Um, so we, I mean, we had quite a small squad, I think. So it was sort of um, either they push someone who was batting at like four or five to go and open or bat at three, and or just put in a youngster and sort of put him in the deep end and sure. 
not really disrupt the order in a sense. So I think that's sure. sort of the viewpoint. Sure. Um, I don't know if, like, personally, obviously, it wasn't too good for my career at the time. Yep. Um, I'd just come back from a broken hand. I broke my hand fielding at short leg that season, and I was out for two months. Well, and I came back and played one game against Essex in the second team and batted at three in that game and got 80. Okay. So then they, that was sort of like a game. It was sort of like a pick between players, like, who do we put in? And I got some sure. runs, so they put me in. Okay, that makes um, sense. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, batting at three in the second team cricket is not anything. Like batting at, batting at three or open the bat in first class cricket it's completely different yeah I know um, imagine which I, f- I found out the hard way I think I scored about 50 runs in four games so I found out yeah. found out the tough way yeah I um, guess yeah it's you know it, it could go either way I guess you know it depends what kind of character you are as well and from what I understand you seem to be like a, you know come at me I'll take the opportunity and I think it's one of those things you know you could have batted at the three and then you, know, you come off with a hundred you know in your your, your yeah, return to first class cricket, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, there's, there's there's pros and cons, which you know, which is you know their decision, I guess. But yeah, I know you obviously you've come out on the good side. You've you've now got a, a three year contract at Derbyshire, which is great. And but before that, that period before going to Derbyshire, I know you played at uh, the or the YCs. You joined the MCC Young Cricketers. So yeah. how did how did that come about? How did you get involved there? Um, well, you know, you'll know the YCs quite well, being based up based up that way. Yeah. Um, I got released by Sussex at the end of 2016 season. Um, didn't do much that winter. Went over to Australia, just chilled out a bit. Didn't play much much cricket or didn't have any plans to play much cricket through 2017 um, in the UK. Uh, came back to England in about May time and we played played club cricket for East Grinstead Cricket Club in Sussex. Like good good club team. That season we went on to win the league. We got to the national semi final. Um, yeah. Had a really good season. Um, and towards the back end, sort of uh, August time, Steve Kirby, who was the head coach of the YCs at the time, he rang me up, um, just called me up because one of the, the former Sussex academy batting coach was the one of the coaches at the YCs, Matt Green. Um, yeah. And he just spoke to Kerbs, but Kerbs rang me. Um, and it sort of quite, happened quite quickly. He just said, do you want to come play a second team game? We're playing against Sussex um, in Sussex. So obviously not too much travel. Uh, travel. Um, yeah, so he just said, do you want to come up and play a game and see how you feel? And went up and played that game. And then he sort of just said there and then he sort of just said, look, mate, we want you to join the program next season. Um, and sort of just signed up there and then, really. Oh, wow. No, that's awesome. Yeah, I guess it's almost like, again, being in the, the right place at the right time and, that, and obviously yeah. performing as well, which is great. Yeah. No, that's brilliant. And then how long did you spend at the Y season? How, how long were you contracted for? Uh, I spent that 2018 season and yep. then briefly last year. So I'd say it was about, I sort of joined in January 2018. Okay. Um, doing that stuff where you work 20 hours a week. Um, yeah. Train yep. 20 hours a week. Um, worked as a, behind the bar in the, the Lord's Tavern. Okay. Um, nice. which, was, which was good fun. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it would have been about 15 months, uh, 17 months, I reckon, probably about, about that time. Oh, wow. Um, just over a year, yeah. Um, okay. I loved every minute of it, to be honest. I think it's a great setup. Yeah, I know. Um, it sounds like people really enjoy it. Everyone that I spoke to, they seem to love it and recommend yeah, it massively. Awesome setup, mate. Like, yeah. Really good. Um, good people. Obviously, it's a, it was more of a... I think I learned quite a lot from the MCC in terms of life lessons as well, like how to manage off the field sure. as well as on the field. Um, this is my first time living out of home, um, living in central London without yeah. much money. Yeah. So learning how to manage your money, obviously manage not trying to ruin your career by getting too loved up in the London life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just loads of distractions, but trying to keep focused, and that was sort of a lot of things that I learned during that that period of time, which was great. Um, took me it took me twelve months to sort of learn how to manage things properly and work work as a true professional in a sense of do training at the right time because they leave it a lot up to you up to individuals. So. Okay. Um. So yeah, it was it was a good experience in that sense. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's it's quite nice how they also touch on the the kind of career side outside of cricket more so than just cricket itself. Like they they give you the option of because I, I was looking at their Instagram page the other day and there was the boys that are contracted now they were doing like uh, cooking courses and stuff like yeah just random yeah, yeah. stuff which is awesome. That's so that's cool. Yeah. Um, and then obviously with your with your Derbyshire contract, um, I'm guessing people want to know how how that came about as well. So <laughs> what was the story there? Um, 
that was very much like we just spoke about, like right place, right time. Yeah. Um, taking an opportunity, uh, the complete opposite to what happened with uh, when I was down at Sussex and I made my my first class bows and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. It was. I sort of. Um, we played a preseason friendly MCC versus Derbyshire at the start of that season, uh, the 2019 season. Um, and Mal Loy was the coach, and Steve Kirby. Um, obviously had moved from the YCs to Derbyshire. Yep. Um, so we started off that that campaign against them. I scored 50 in one of the innings and um, bowled, took, took a couple of wickets, I think. Um, and Mal Loy spoke to Ajmal Shazad, who was the who is now the coach of the MCC program. Yep. Um, and just basically said, asked if I wanted to go on a little trial or not. Um, at the time, I had a I had a knee problem, like a slight knee problem. So it was. A, he just sort of left it up to me. He was like, do you want to wait a couple of weeks or do you want to go now? Um, and obviously, I just went, I want to go now. So it was almost, I played one more game for the YCs and then went up and tried for Derbyshire for six weeks. Um, played a couple of games, three-day games, um, managed to score a few runs, scored a couple of hundreds for them. Yep. Um, and then scored a 80 um, and a 60 at, at York Cricket Club against Yorkshire and they had a se- decent team out um, and then sort of got a call from Houts just saying look mate we're trying to sign you um, we'll, we'll sort of let you know what, what the go is and I was just like, obviously going to jump at, at anything they offered sure. me and somehow I managed to get three years well, yeah. a three year contract but that was fantastic um, obviously I, I rang my mum and dad straight away just said look this has happened but yeah. uh, can you send me some money so I can move houses <laughs> up to it up to Nottingham because I don't yeah. have any money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was obviously fantastic to get that that call from Dave Houghton, the head coach. It was, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, and I guess like with him being your coach at the YCs, it was quite nice to um, rock up into a new environment and it almost felt as though you fit in. Um, yeah. But what is that like generally? I know you play for, obviously you play for a lot of teams and, um, you know, like obviously rocking up, not knowing anyone. It's, it's quite an intimidating thing for a lot of people. So how do you how do you go about that? How do you deal with it? You know, how do you kind of break the ice, kind of thing? Yeah, it's it's quite intimidating, especially when you're walking into dressing rooms with serious cricket players. Yeah. Like, especially when we've got Wayne Madsen, obviously Ravi, international player. Yeah. Um, Captain Billy, we've got some serious names in that dressing room. So walking in there on my first day, walking in because we had team training um, the day before we played against Australia A, which was my debut for the club. Um, I remember the team training just walking in, hadn't met any of the first team players where they just said hello oh, wow. um, a couple of times, just in, never really spoken to them. So it was like sort of an introduction of like, hi, oh, just everyone at once. Um, yeah, yeah. But it was obviously great to have familiar faces. Like I knew Dave Houghton because he was part of the Middlesex, um, obviously Middlesex coaching staff and we trained a lot with them with the YCs and obviously then Steve Kirby. Yeah. Um, so it was good having those guys to sort of show me around, get me, get me into the squad and stuff and, um, but yeah, it's definitely intimidating. But I think um, you just got to be yourself, and as long as you're chatting to the guys and obviously being very humble, like in those those scenarios, I think that that they will accept you, obviously, into addressing them. And that's the great thing about Derby as well. Like at Derbyshire, there's not really any egos. I, I sure. haven't seen anyone with an ego yet, which is something that's I I, I would imagine is quite rare. Yeah. Um, everyone's sort of there for the same goal and not really selfish in any sort of way. So that was fantastic to walk in and sort of have that hit you straight away almost in that sense that you just sort of felt at home straight away, which was obviously brilliant. Yeah, and I guess that's like what you need for the kind of winning formula as well. Everyone on the same page, everyone striving towards the same kind of goal and that makes a lot of sense. And then also with, um, I know you're quite close with uh, Darren Smith. Um, I know he's obviously been at Derbyshire for a long time now, but was he almost like a, has he been like a mentor in a way or a role model? Yeah, yes, yeah, for sure. Um, he was great when I joined up with the second team. Obviously, he was at the time sort of tran- um, transforming his, his role from player to coach. So yeah. like his, I didn't know it was actually going to be his last season last year, but I knew he was very much involved as the sort of second team mentor in a sense. Um, so to join up and he was just so accommodating through that trial period. He was li- he's literally, as you probably know, he's the nicest work around. Yeah. Um, he doesn't have a bad word to say about anyone. So it's great to have him. He conducts himself perfectly on and off the field. Um, so to sort of see how he conducted himself and how he played the game, um, 
sort of gave me a little insight into how Derbyshire would go about things, obviously, um, yep. before I even met up with the first team squad. So, massively look up to him. Obviously, the other South African, Wayne, as well. Yes, yeah. Um, yep. I, I love the way he goes about everything he does. So, he's another one that I look up to hugely. Obviously, the career he's had, the way he goes about life on and off the field. Yeah. Um, very much, very much, um, yeah, look up to him. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's so important to have almost like uh, mentors and role models, especially, you know, for youngsters coming to a new environment and someone to just almost show them the ropes in a way and just, uh, yeah, kind of take you under their wing kind of thing and just, you know, ease you into the, the, the pressures of a new club, uh, a new environment, uh, like you said, playing with huge names. Um, and I've spoke to quite a few people. I've done these interviews with, with quite a few young players as well, uh, a couple of mates in South Africa. And they've said the same thing. You know, They always mention how important a mentor is and um, having someone to, to be with you uh, through that. Because cricket is a mental game as well, isn't it? You know, it most of the, yeah, 100%. Yeah, so if, you, if you're not feeling comfortable in your environment and you're feeling a little unsettled, that could affect your game massively. And I'm sure you, know, you would know that. Um, but yeah, that's that's great that you've got that kind of um, relationship with those people at Derbyshire. That's fantastic. And then um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, this is based around uh, uh, the life as a, an all-rounder because uh, I know you bat and you bowl. Um, so I just wanted to go through like a, a typical day um, in the life of Finn Hudson Princess when you when you're training. So how does how does it work? You know, are you spending fifty percent, fifty percent with bat and ball in the nets, or is is one thing kind of prioritised or? Um, I guess it depends what we're sort of building up towards. I think last season, when we were building up towards T T20 campaign, it was definitely more bowling. Sure. Um, I think my role sort of got defined after the first few games that I was going to be um, mainly played as a bowler with the ability to finish an innings at the end, sort of bat seven, uh, bat eight sometimes. Yep. Um, so that was quite clear to me early on. So when I'd go to trainings, for instance, like get to the ground, um, do the do the team warm up and then you'd usually get sec- sectioned off. So sure. I'd usually start off with Ravi or Logan bowling in the nets at Billy and Reese. So I'd working through the power play overs, um, and then you'd have a break and then you'd come back and you'd work on your death skills at a different pair, maybe Yoz and we had Steve-O there, Darren Stevens. Yeah. Um, so come back and do do those things afterwards. Um, so I'd probably go through like four six overs in the nets, just topping up skills. Then you can go out in the middle, optional. Um, target practice if you wanted to do it work on some slower balls some skills um, if you wanted to try and develop those sort of things in a season yep. um, but if it was for like first class cricket um, I'd definitely keep it 50-50 um, obviously both important if you're batting 7 or 8 in first class cricket you need to need to score runs so um, obviously work on skills I'd, I'd usually want to bowl more into a mitt um, in first class cricket so I'd get the feel of trying to shape the ball either way yeah. Um, either seam it, depending on what wicket we knew we were playing on, um, and then going to going to the battle against the sidearm and a couple of bowlers the day before a game, um, get into quite a tough mental battle. Um, yep. Usually just to get a bit of the match feeling towards it, match intensity in the net. Sure. Um, but then on the morning of a game, I usually, especially in first class games, I just face some sidearm, um, just okay. gentle, just trying to get myself hitting the ball out of the middle so I can feel in a good mental space before we are. Uh, yeah. Head up to the change rooms instead of nicking off four times. <laughs> yeah, and are you are you quite a, a big fan of uh, hitting a few balls in before you bat? Do you quite like just you know getting your yeah, eye? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm always due, due to being an all rounder. I usually be one of the first people at the ground in the net um, in the morning of a game. So yeah. I'll usually rock up to a ground at about half eight on a yeah. first class game that starts at eleven. So I'll get there about eight thirty. Okay. Um, have some food at the ground and then get into the nets for about nine o'clock and hit balls for sort of fifteen minutes. Yeah. Um, before I go and do my like bowling preps and then team warm ups usually start around ten o'clock. So, um, yeah. I'll, fifteen minutes. It depends. Sometimes it's five minutes. If I hit ten balls in a row out the middle, I can just walk out a net. But yeah, if I haven't found the middle for fifteen balls, and I'll have to hit a few good ones to finish. But it is pretty much dependent on that. It's just sure. feeling on the day, I guess. Yeah. No. Of course. All right. And then just um. You know, let's say you're in the middle of your first class season. You, you're traveling a lot, playing a lot of four-day crickets during the week. How much, kind of, how much practice do you need to do? Uh, being a bowler, you're obviously there's a lot of workload going into the game itself. Uh, so, right. what's the what's the scenario? You know, when you're on on the bus and you know when you rock up the day before a game, do you actually go through lots of kind of overs and or not really? Um, yeah, it, it varies. I think I think in the T20 comp because it's so quick fire and you're always traveling around. I think. What we did last year was it was almost like you'd you'd go to a ground, 
do the morning stuff and then play and then you'd have like almost just one day off and then you'd yeah. go, go again. So when that was going on, you didn't really, uh, pardon me, we didn't really get that many opportunities to um, train as it were. We got, we got a couple of weeks off where we were able to have like a block of training, but um, it was sort of do your skills before the games. But the first class games, it was tough because especially a couple of occasions we had a T20 game and then it would be a, f- a first class game. So it's almost like repairing your action because I'd, yeah, try and use like different actions for T20 than I would to Red Bull cricket because bowling to a right hander in Red Bull cricket, you want to have the ability to beat both halves of the bat. Whereas in White Bull cricket, you're trying not to give them width. Yeah, so you're trying predominantly to run the ball back into the stumps. So it's um, just two different game plans there. Yeah, so it's two different game game plans, and if you're trying to adjust to different formats quite quickly, um, you have to do the bowling. It doesn't matter if your body's sore or if you've bowled a few overs. It has to, it has to happen in a sense. So. Yeah, the physios and the S&Cs will get together and sort of tell you what time frame you have and how many overs you'll get yeah. um, between between fixtures. Um, but it's almost like you have to make sure that you use those overs wisely because if you just go out there and sort of just, just bowl for the sake of it, then you're not going to get uh, anything out of it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was, a lot of the time it, was, it wasn't even like full run-up work. You'd work, um, you'd work off like six seven paces just trying okay. to get the, the feel of like getting your arm a bit higher swinging it around and stuff and and then you can go do maybe an over or two off a full run and then sort of knock it on the head trying to avoid the injuries okay yeah because i guess obviously injury prevention's huge but yeah okay that makes sense it makes a little more sense with um obviously you're still 23 you've got a long career ahead of you you know you played you were 12th man for england i believe yeah, yeah, I've yeah. done it a few times, yeah. Nice, okay. Um, obviously, you want to be in that starting 11 one day. Um, you know, what What do you think you need to do in order to, to achieve that? You know, realistically, uh, what lies ahead of you and, and who you're competing against? And, you know, is, is there a specific, uh, you know, amount of runs per season that you would, you would need to consider or to be considered to, to get selected and, and wickets as well? Do you reckon? Yeah. Um, Tough question. I, I think know. at the moment, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. at the moment, um, obviously, they lean towards players that are playing in Division One. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I think like the the long term or short term goal now for for Derbyshire, I guess, is we have been planning on how we're going to get into Division One again, um, and I think that is a realistic aim for us in the next sort of two years. So that is yeah. obviously the rest of my contract. So that's the aim. Um, obviously, that there's, there's been players that have gone on to play um, international cricket without being in Division 1. Um, so um, that's the aim for me, really. Um, yeah. we're just I, I wouldn't say there's a there's sort of a target in terms of goals and runs and stuff. I think right. it's more just consistency and maybe match-winning performances that sort of stand out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I think, personally, my, my battle at the moment is to try and get up and bat in the top sort of five or six for Derbyshire at this moment in time. Um, so then I can obviously go on and score big hundreds as well as do what I am with the ball at the moment. So that's sort of like a short-term goal for me before I start thinking about further honours. But I think in terms of playing international cricket, obviously there's a lot of good all-rounders. And at the moment, they've obviously selected those 55 players yes, um, yeah. that can go back to training. And there's a few all-rounders in there. Um, there's Gregory Robinson, obviously Stokes. There's there's loads of them. So, um, yeah, just mainly just try and obviously cement uh, top order batting spot or middle order batting spot at Derby instead of batting down at eight at the moment. Um, and then from there, sort of just probably try and score a few hundreds. Maybe if we get a few games in towards back end of the season, then score a couple of hundreds, score a hundred or something. Yeah. Um, and then really give myself the confidence to go and smash next season and hopefully just start knocking down a few doors for England Lions selection. No, yeah, of course. It's um, it's interesting how the the game works. I, having spoken to again uh, a couple of the other guys during the interviews. Um, the common theme is you, you're only a couple of innings away from, you know, from getting to the next level. So you know, 300s yeah. back to back. People obviously see that go, wow, you know, in serious form. Let's give them a crack. So I guess you never really know. And like you said, if you can just be as consistent as possible, uh, you never know what's gonna be around the corner. Um, so yeah, I, you know, obviously keep going with it. You're doing a great job as it is. Um, and yeah, I'm sure I speak on behalf of everyone too. Uh, to say that, you know, we, we hope to see you playing for, you know, for England one day, which would be awesome. Um, yeah, amazing. Yeah, but, and then just with, because uh, I do a lot of coaching for, for young cricketers, um, and, you know, it's, it's always nice to get, uh, you know, professionals' advice on, on kind of how you approach 
your kind of uh, dreams and goals to become um, uh, a professional? And what's what's the mindset? You know, what what kind of sets of advice would you give them? Um, well, one of the biggest ones for me is enjoy it. Um, okay, nice. And that's that's not even forcing yourself to enjoy it. That is play purely because you love the game. I think, yeah. Um, if you're loving the game, then you're willing to push yourself to levels that maybe you wouldn't if you didn't love it. Um, so make sure, I'd, for one, I'd, I'd make sure you love it. Um, I'm a massive, self-confessed cricket badger. I, I watch all types of cricket. I literally know what's going on worldwide with, with yep. cricket. So absolutely love the game. Um, and secondly, it would just be just work, work, work. Like sure. Smart work, but yep. work hard. So doing the things, listen to coaches, um, and to just just keep working hard, keep training, keep pushing yourself. Um, you never know; there's always an opportunity somewhere. So, sure, if you keep knocking down the door, eventually you will get a chance. And I think, like my story so far, probably says that. If anything, like two and a half years out of the game from yep. Sussex to Derbyshire, um, so there's, there's always going to be an opportunity. So as long as you work hard and you're enjoying the game, yeah. Then, You'll get a go, I guess. Yeah, hundred percent. I guess it's it's important for people to also know that you know setbacks do happen. You know, you do have a couple of bad performances here and there, but it's not. I know it sounds cliche, but it's not how hard you fall, but it's you know about how how you can get back up and you know keep fighting kind of thing, yeah. which is which is fantastic. Yeah, but like I said, all the best, man. Like it's been great chatting to you. Um, you know, great bits of advice uh, taken out of this and. You know, I'm, I'm fingers crossed we uh, we see you playing for for England very soon. And fingers crossed we get a season in as well. Um, and what are your thoughts? Do you, like, just if you had to give me a yes or no, do you reckon there'll be any championship crickets or or not? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm hopeful. That's all I'm gonna say. I'd, yeah. I'd, we haven't heard anything yet. Have you not? Okay. Now the test series. Now the test series is um is going ahead. Then very hopeful that we can get some championship and maybe some T20 cricket in yeah. towards the back end of the year. No, fingers crossed, man. Um, just quickly, uh, just answering one of these questions. Uh, I mean, you can say this as quick as you like, but who would be in your current world test 11? Oh, um, that is tough. I actually had this conversation the other day. I'd probably, who would I have? Uh, Warner, unfortunately, although he didn't do too well in the UK. Yeah. I'd probably have Warner in there um, with Elgar. I think Dean Elgar. Oh, yes, yeah, good pick. Nice. Yeah. Um, Three, four, five is tough. I'd, you definitely got to have um, Steve Smith in there. I don't know whether he'd bat three or I know he bats four, but I want Joe Root in there as well. So I'll go Smith three, Root four. Um, and then it's between Coley and Williamson at five. Um, oh, tough one. Uh, or Babar Azam. Jesus, that, yeah. that is tough. <laughs> um, we'll leave at, We'll uh, go with uh, Kane Williamson at five. Yeah. Um, Stoke six. Yeah. Uh, De Cox seven. Yeah. Like uh, eight. Another eight. Um, well, I know my bowlers would be. I know Anderson would be in there. I know Pat Cummins would be in there. So he'd be eight. Pat Cummins at eight. Nathan Lyon would be in there. Okay. Um, and. KG Rabada. I was going to say. I was literally just yeah. going to say Rabada. No, oh, brilliant. Yeah. Awesome, man. Finish it off. Well, fantastic. Hopefully, we're going to add uh, Finn Hudson Princess to that uh, 11 soon. <laughs> <laughs> One day, mate. One day. That's it, brother. Awesome. Cheers for everything, man. Uh, we'll keep in touch. But uh, yeah, good luck with the future and enjoy Perfect, the rest mate. of lockdown. And fingers crossed for a season. Cheers, mate. Thanks for having me. Cheers, brother. No worries.